Our economy works in cycles and so is our life. We all are running in a cycle. So what goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down, just like the heartbeat, right? Let me ask you a question. When was the right time to do research on double helical structure of DNA? You'll say probably 1950s. So if today somebody goes and tries to do that research, people will say that it's done 50 years ago, boss. Why are you trying to do now? Correct. What is right now? may not be correct in the future. So what you should be doing now may not be appropriate to do 10 or 15 years later. For example, today you'd look at uh, markets like uh, smartphone markets or the variable markets. So some of them are growing, some of them are dead, right? For example, the typing machine market. So nobody manufactures the typing machine anymore because it's all dead. The calculator market, nobody probably very less number of calculators are manufactured today because it's all inside the smartphone, right? So the same way, in the biotech sector, we have some examples which is uh, going towards a downward trend and something is going upwards trend. So in this video, I'm going to talk about one of the upward trend and that is why bioinformatics is going upward and you should be ready for it. Okay. In your childhood, you must have remembered that when you were young, your mom used to say that this is the right time to take all the nutrition because that your body is forming. Correct. The same way, this is the right time to take all the skill set related to bioinformatics because the bioinformatics market is still in a formative phase. Once it is matured, there will be no room for you. So while it is still in the formative phase in India, you can jump on it. What exactly is the proof that it is in the formative phase? You are seeing the genomics companies taking shape here. You are seeing the global leader of genomics, Illumina, coming to India. Then you are seeing newer startups which are using bioinformatics and computational biology. You are seeing people applying the computational biology and bioinformatics into agri-genomics, pharmacogenomics, all of that, right? Drug discovery. This market is right now in the formative phase. So this is the right thing. Now, what are the steps you have to follow? It's very simple. You will have to first learn some programming languages. It could be uh, Python, R, Perl. C++, something like that. So generally Python should be sufficient. Next, you have to learn some data analytical skills. You should learn some tools which you, you will use in the bioinformatics research. And then of course, you need to have a very solid background of molecular biology and genetics because that is where the genomics and all that proteomics. So this expertise is required. And then need to learn the tools like BLAST, ClusterW, Bowtie, PyMol, Bioconductor, Galaxy, GATK. So all these software packages you need to learn. And then you have to also learn SQL, no SQL databases. So all these are basically available online also. But since it is not in a structured format, it is very difficult. So that is why Biotechnica has got structured live classes. You come online, our teacher will teach you, our scientist will teach you. Then you're absorbed into our projects, which we do. So of course, all the details are given in the description. You can check. But now what is the most exciting part of bioinformatics? I'll tell you. See, on one hand, this is in the formative phase, I told you. But there's another revolution which is happening side by side. And this revolution is going to be the game changer. Now that is called as computational power. So for example, let me just uh, take my... Mobile. So this mobile today has more RAM than the first computer which I bought in, I think, 2003, right? So that computer had 256 MB RAM. Today the mobiles have 8 GB RAM. Can you believe that? So computational power is increasing, right? And computational power is directly proportional to the growth of bioinformatics. So bioinformatics uh, complex softwares or AI ML softwares can only work when the computational power is high. And you know that the data which we generate through the DNA sequencing and all that, it goes into, you know, petabytes, right? So to sequence such, to analyze a huge amount of data, you will need the strong computers, right? So the computational power is increasing, but it is going towards the quantum computing phase, right? So quantum biology, you must have heard of where in the photosynthesis, we say that it, it is because of quantum biology that we are able to convert the photons into the energy and then the, into the uh, photosynthesis, you must have seen that. So that is where we have this uh, system here now that, okay, if the computational power increases and reaches the quantum level, imagine where bioinformatics would be. I think uh, seven years ago, I did a podcast of, are we on, a, on the verge of discovering 1000 molecules per year? Probably Next year, we will be in a position to you know, look for 100,000 molecules per year, not more than that. So there is a power of computational tools, which is growing. Now, followed by that, of course, machine learning and AI ML. Now, pattern recognition, because entire DNA sequence is a pattern, right? Analyzing the pattern, understanding it, extrapolating it, putting some 
other base pairs to see what kind of uh, you know changes happens in the gene. All of that can be done using AI ML and bioinformatics. So, and you could be doing it on plants, you can be doing it on animals, you could be doing it into humans. So, definitely we are looking at a greater, grander research stage for all of you. Now, the funding part, that is a very important part. You look at this, that the Indian Biotech, that is the Department of Biotechnology, has allocated crores of rupees, like thousands of crores of rupees, government has allocated to Department of Biotechnology in Biotech. And all of this, that is going to go to the startups and the academy. All that funding is going towards bioinformatics because bioinformatics is the new, next future of all of this. Of course, if you make a career in bioinformatics, you can get there. But one very important thing you should know is you should have attention to detail. You should have creative problem solving skills. So you have to solve problems using bioinformatics, which has never been done before. Right? So think on those lines. First, learn bioinformatics. Think, think on those lines. Pursue this uh, course which we are having in an internship and then become a pro and go ahead, do some research. Make us proud, make the world proud with your work and you will see so results will follow. Every company will be dying to work with you if you take the right step today. See, if you pick a small sand stone okay, and you are sitting on the career beach, you throw a small stone towards that ocean of opportunities. A tsunami of opportunities will come to you. But today you have to pick that stone. And that stone is expertise in bioinformatics. Okay? Expertise in AI ML. I'm not saying because we want you to do this. I'm telling you that if you don't do it, 10 years from today, it will be obsolete. 10 years from today, this market will also be saturated. Nobody will take new people. The old ones will already be set. Correct? Just like how you see the wet lab, right? So that's all from my side. Thank you so much. But if you have any questions, comments, anything you would like to know, put them down in the comment section or reach out to us at our toll free number 1-800-1200-185. Thank you so much. Take care. Keep shining. Bye-bye.